ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಾವು ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಪ್ರವಿಜ್ಯ ಪ್ರವಿಭಜ್ಯ ದಾನ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಡಿಟೇಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ನಾವು ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ಎ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಿಹೆನ್ಸಿವ್ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ನಾವು ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಸಮರಿ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ದ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ನಾವು that uh, of course we will just skip many of the details in this chapter because they are not very critical issues prag abhitam samvisham savinsham adhyaya shatam panchasu sthaneshu tatra sthunam tatra sutra sthanam adhyaya ha shat chatvaram chat 46 chapters in sutra sthana shodasha nidanani 16 in nidana sthana dasha sharirani 10 uh, chapters in sharira sthana chatvar chatvarim shatiki sthani astau kalpa ha ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಟ್ in there is a, a definition of the sutra sthan sutanat sutranat cheva savanat cha artha santate he the sutra sthana is defined as a, a comprehensive chapter or comprehensive course uh, as such or module module of study where the all the subject all the subject or the course is presented in a nutshell in a brief manner and it's also organized in such a way sutranath is organized in such a way that you will have a perfect idea of what you are going to study and it gives a moderate detail and control that's the sutra sthana now in the nidana sthana again it's the same the chapters vata vyadika marsham sis ashmarisha bagandara etc khet rakshana nirdesha the nidana niti shodasha the nidana sthana would have the description of causes of the disease etiology of the disease the symptomatology of the disease as well as uh, the uh, assessment of the diagnosis of the disease they are the contents of the nidana sthana sharira sthana now this is a, again a point which i have mentioned earlier only after studying about the pathology the normal uh, physiology is studied in the sharira sthana it's all bodh chintana ne shuddhi etc and vidyanartham sharira se vishram yogi naam api the sharira sthana gives a <coughs> clear idea about the situation of the body or condition of the body details of the body both for physicians as well as yogis so it is not only for physician the study of the nat is uh, sharira is not only anatomy it is a, a functional anatomy so ayurvedic sharira is not only anatomy because when you say anatomy it is related to the dead body but the ayurvedic sharira is about the functional anatomy it contains the anatomy structure but more important than that the function is given more importance and hence a combination of both physiology and anatomy is the idea now in the current medical system also there is a, a new uh, concept developing and that new concept developing is uh, to merge that anatomy in with the, the physiology and come to a, com, a, a new concept of uh, functional anatomy that that dead room uh, dead body dissection is almost given is the least priority as such so that's uh, the new thought coming up and that new thought the guideline for the new thought could be present in ayurvedic studies as such then comes the chikitsa sthana the chikitsa sthana prayashtitam prashanam chikitsa shanti karma cha pariyaya hatasya nirdesha the chikitsa sthana muchate the chikitsa is not only the treatment now the what we now consider is a treatment in sense giving a medicine and saying that good bye but that's not the chikitsa is a prayashtitam a consoling the patient and ensuring that the patient's psychological condition also is proper and then prashamana the reduction of the symptoms are such then there is another view the shanti karma cha shanti karma is a, any of the correction correction to whatever the disease uh, the defect has occurred uh, something like rehabilitation shanti karma is a rehabilitation so chikitsa is not only a treatment of giving some medicines and prescribing some medicine alone it's about the counseling of the patient 
ensuring that the patient has uh, rehabilitated properly and uh, the symptoms are reduced as such. That's the chikitsa and uh, uh, the chikitsa sthana is uh, uh, about that as such. Then asto kalpa hasama kya hata ha? Visha bhecha ja kalpa nata. Kalpa sthana is uh, mainly about uh, the treatment of visha, the poisoning, different sets of uh, conditions of poisoning and how to treat those uh, conditions as such. Uh, that's the uh, issue. Then the Uttar Uttarantra, there is a controversy about Uttarantra, whether that Uttarantra is a, a original part of the uh, social samita or not, whether it was added later on, that's the controversy. Anyway, in the Uttarantra, Atap Param Sanan Mima Tantram Uttar Mujate, Adhikritya Kritam Yasma Tantram Yeta Kupatravana, Aupad Dravika Ityesha, Tasya Adhikritya Nirchare, it's mainly about the Aupadrava, the uh, other residual complications or treating with the complications of the disease is the major source or major aim of the Uttaradantra in that the first few chapters are about uh, the Shalakya, the, so hence it is also called as a Shalakya Tantra or then it is also about Kaumar Vritya, the treatment of uh, the pediatric condition and then of course the Kaya Chikitsa where the physical disorders are treated and uh, Hence, Shalakya Tantram, Kaumaram, Chikitsa, Kaiki Chaya, Bhuta Vidya Ji Chattwari, Tante Tu Uttarasam Jite, Bhuta Vidya, Vajikara, Rasayana Vidhi, Visha Tantra also are added in the Uttara Tantra. So, Uttara Tantra gives a comprehensive idea about the total aspect of the medicine. Ashtanga Ayurveda is completed by reading the Uttara Tantra. So, that's the one. And hence, Uttara Tantra is also considered as a a, a better chapter or better uh, module, Sreshatvad Uttaram Hyatada, Tantram Ahur Mahasheha, Bahuatta Sangrahat Sreshtam Uttaram Va Api Pashtimam. It is considered as uh, one of the best component of the text and hence it is given the name of Uttara Tantra. So that is about the comprehensive syllabus. Now the next part is syllabus is given. Now how to read and how to uh, improve your performance. Edanji Avasham Adhyam Adhikya Karmapi Avasham Upasitabhyam Ubayadhyam Hibishak Radha Khobhavati You have to read the text and it's not enough if you read the text. Whatever you have read in the text should be practiced and that practice is important. And a person who is skilled in both the theory as well as the practice only becomes a good physician, capable physician. And there Sushuda says again very popular statements of Sushuda which are generally considered as the highlights of Sushutamita. Yes, to Kevara Shastra Naha, Karma Su Aparinishiraha, Samukhyati Aturam Prapya, Prapya Bhiru Ibaham. Yes, to Karma Su Nishnato, Dhashya to Shastra Behishkrataha, Sasatsu Pujam Napoti, Vodham Chachati Rajataha, Ubha Veto Anipnao, Asamatho Sokarmani, Adha Veda Dhara Veto, Yeka Paksho Iva Dujo. A person who knows about only the theory. But he is not skilled in the practice, uh, then such a person will be a coward, like running away from the war field. Like a coward running away from the war, war field, he may not continue his practice. Uh, we have many of our alumni old students who are not practicing and who are doing some other business and flourishing in the business. Uh, that's one uh, category of uh, a incomplete physicians or incomplete uh, train, training. Another group of the people are those who do not bother about the theory, but somehow gain the skill of practice. Uh, in the current situation, once you go into the medical profession, you will have the professors of the profession. Professors of the profession are the medical representatives and medical representatives will teach you like how, how to prescribe the medicines. And most of the times the Practitioners give more respect to those uh, representatives than their teachers. Uh, such persons who are practicing, they may flourish in the practice, but they do not deserve respect from <coughs> the society. They cannot be respected from the, by the society. And in those days, the law regulating the medical practice was very rigid. And uh, Sushruta says, such a person should be terminated or should be executed. Bodham Chachitya, the death sentence is suggested. 
for a person who practices without the theory knowledge but only with the somehow gaining the skill he, he is uh, he is supposed to have a death sentence by the administration of that period so legal control of the medicine in that day during those days is another issue a bit more of the detail of that legal control we'll come to that when we go into <coughs> the next chapters coming chapters a ideal physician should be skilled in both theory as well as a practice and so should the compass that to a bird flying with two wings so when both the wings are proper a bird can fly if one wing is not uh, is not capable that bird cannot fly properly the same is again repeated now that should give some more stress upon these issues of a a proper knowledge for the physician oshadhyaha amrutakalpastu shastra ashani vishopamaha bhavanti ajnehi upardaha tasmad etan vivardheda medicines which can really make the person uh, live which are as good as the nectar amrita they can be has, as harmful as a weapon or maybe a lightning or like a poison a medicine which is improperly used can injure a person like a shastra or it can instantly kill like a lightning or it may gradually kill like a poison and hence a person who doesn't have a knowledge of the medicine if he uses the medicine such a person should be avoided snehatishu anavidnyah eschedyadi karmasu sanihant janam lobhat kuvaidyah rapadoshadah if a person who is not skilled in his practice and they skilled in the techniques of the practice techniques of the practice could be either sneha kriya like gomana shodha vilachana etc or chedya dina surgical procedures if they are not skilled if a such person is allowed to practice then the problem would be or the big blame would be on the administration ripadoshadah the such a kuvaidya a bad physician if he is practicing then the blame has to be on the administration the king so there again is again a stress upon the same issue the legal control of the medical practice in that those days was very rigid and very strong and meaningful yes to bhai jaha madiman sasamartho artha sadane ah ve karma nirvodham dvichakra hasyandano yatha now again another example is a repetition of the same idea of previous sentences but because of the importance so the stresses upon that part like a person who is skilled in both the theory as well as the practice is compared to a, <coughs> a vehicle uh, with the two wheels and where both the wheels are proper of course in those days the vehicles used in the war field were having only two wheels now you have vehicles with plenty of wheels uh, multiple wheels and uh, the condition of all the wheels is uh, quite important and uh, uh, if all the wheels are not condition properly the functioning of that the vehicle would not be proper and hence you have to give attention to all the aspects of the study as such and hence what shushuk says is athavatsa tade tad adhyayam yatha tatha upadhare maya pratyamanam the uh, the exchange of the ideas in the classroom of the shushuk in gurukula would be the teacher would be a uh, 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 dictating or maybe giving a deductive lecture to the student and the student has to attentively hear that whatever is told in the classroom tade tad adhyayam yatha tatha upadharaya maya prachamanam now how the student has to sit in the classroom discipline in the classroom atha shuteye krita uttara sangaya avyakulaya upasthitaya adhyayana kale shishyaya yatha shakti guru hu upadishetha <coughs> पदम पादम श्लोकम वा ते च पद पाद श्लोका भूय क्रमेण अनुसंधेयः एवं एकैकशो घटयेत आत्मना च अनुपठेत अद्रुतम अविलंबितम अविशंकितम अनन्नासिकम सुव्यक्ताक्षरम अपीडितम अपीडित वर्णम अक्षिभ्रुव ओस्सहस्तेह अनभिनीतम सुसंस्कृतम नाचिच्चेहि नाकनीचेश्च स्वरेहि पठेत दि मेथड ऑफ एक्सचेंज वुड बी द स्टूडेंट वुड बी sitting in a classroom with the upper part of the body covered with a cloth krita uttara asangaya and the student should come to the class after having a bath should a should be clean and avyakulaya the student should have a full attention on the subject 
should not be disturbed otherwise upasthitaya student will be sitting in the classroom earlier too it was the same today also it is the same shishya yatha shakti guru upajeta the teacher would be teaching the student as such uh the <clears throat> yeah, and the, it's not the quantity of the subject which is uh, important instead it's uh, the stu uh, how the student would follow and a total description of the subject should be the criteria to decide how much is to be studied it could be padam padam shlokam it could be a single word in a class or it could be one fourth of a shloka or one shloka or so on now once the teacher teaches any uh, topic student has to follow it and then she has to uh, uh, recollect the subject again and she has to repeat that whatever he has studied in his mind that anusandhana student has to repeat whatever he has seen and heard in the classroom in his mind and that that only makes him capable of uh, the uh, uh, retaining the subject which he has studied devo meke ke shaghadayat atmana jano patheta so this way every word or every sentence or every chapter has to be followed and when you read the method of reading is it should not be too fast adrutam or it should not be too slow avilambitam and it should be very clear abhishankitam it should not be producing confusion anunasikam we are not supposed to use nasal tone a clear uh, has to a clear word has to be a uh, clear tone has to be prescribed or has to be used and all the letters should be pronounced properly suvyakta aksharam apitita varnam unnecessary stress on any area should not be given and uh, you are not supposed to show physical activity during the study reading akshibhuo sahaste anabhinitam drama is not a part of the teaching as well as learning and uh, it should be decent so sanskritam and should not be too loud or too low voice of reading now once this kind of exchange is done during that course of the study na cha antarayana kashchit vrajeta tayoha adhyanayoha that exchange between the teacher and the student is considered as very auspicious and no one is supposed to intervene during the that interaction between the student and teachers so those who attempt to join even the online courses later and then permission in between these are not what sushruta has suggested of course offline classes we may close the door but in online classes the issue is uh, something different now the how to get a uh, the skill the perfection in the study the perfection in the study again very very uh, classical and very highlighted sentences of uh, sushruta i would always consider these sentences as uh, the most critical sentences of sushruta samhita shuti hi guru parha daksha tandra nidra vivartita पठन नेते नबिधिना शिष्य शास्त्रांतम आपने याद है, the student should be physically, mentally uh, clean. It's not only physical cleanliness. Guru Parah should be obedient to the teacher. When you say obedient to the teacher, that doesn't mean that you should follow everything told by the teacher. Instead, you should follow only with those which are really uh, meaningful, and uh, it should be uh, no, uh, for the welfare of the student. then tandra nidra vivartita during the course of study as a student you are supposed to have a control over your sleep as well as the laziness that has to be avoided and if you follow this then pathanaya nabhidina shishya shastrantam apniyat then only you can become uh, a, 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 a or reach to the end of the course so to complete the course is not the question of examination now of course to get through the examination you have plenty of other methods but what sushruta has suggested is uh, you should be able to you could be able to get through the examination only by following the uh, guidelines and the guidelines are shuchihi guru parha daksha daksha is uh, nitya abhishekta you should be following the study regularly study every day that's the daksha nitya abhishekta is daksha then uh the uh, tandra tandra word which is often translated as laziness the laziness is not a very correct translation for the tandra word the definition of tandra is indriyartheshu asamvittihi gauravam jimbanam klamah nidrartasya vesya tasya tandra menirdishayat this is what the commentary says a person who is not really focused on what he sees or what he hears 
but still he is there physically there but not mentally there and uh, who feels heaviness and who yawns in between or who feels tiredness who feels like as if he is going to sleep these are the conditions of the description of the tantra now another very important se- sentence is to gain the perfection in the uh, subject you should go step by step the capabilities have to be increased step by step and those steps of gaining a knowledge and gaining a perfection in the study as well as a communication ability are vaksaustave artha vijnane pragalbhe karma nepune tad abhyase eta siddha uta ete da adhyayana antaraha the first of the step is vaksaustava you should be able to read and pronounce whatever you have studied properly and artha vijnane the next is you should know the exact meaning of what you have read then the pragalbhya pragalbhya is a is a broader aspects of the knowledge it's not only what the word would say but we call as reading in between the lines you should be knowing the exact contextual meaning of the sentence and when to apply that that applicability of whatever you have studied in the context is the pragalbhya karma nepune is a, the skill of profession the skill has to be attained skill of profession can gain in two stages the first is observation the next is participation the first is you have to observe a te- your teacher doing whatever is done the next is you have to participate and this has to gain gradually it's not enough if you do it once it has to be repeated prabhyasita that repetition of whatever you have studied is the abhyas that results in siddhi siddhi is the perfection the uh, siddhi is defined as aarabha abhipreratha sadanam siddhi whatever you wish and whatever you start you should conclude capacity to conclude the whatever is started and whatever is wished is considered as siddhi of course from indian mythology in purana the siddhis also are named in a different manner and those are considered as ashtasiddhi and those ashtasiddhi are anima mahima kevala galima mahima tata uh, uh, and istata tata prarapti devata prarapamesha tata ishatvam voshitvam cha aparam the uh, the ashtasiddhi are anima mahima where you can increase or reduce the size of your body this is what the text says now whether it is physically practically possible or not is not the issue the other is prapti devata whatever you wish it should be gained and prakamyanja control over the desire is a prakamya ishatvam and vashitvam a being in the leadership is ishatva and vashitva is a capacity to control others these are considered as siddhi so it's sort of siddhi is a ultimately a, a capability to achieve any of the results without efforts and perfect that perfection is with ease or with the comfort is the siddhi <coughs> and that should be the target the target should be the to achieve a perfection with zero error now we use a word commonly used word as a zero error and of course surgery is a field where zero error is always the target and hence that effort should be over to achieve that and this can be achieved only by a step by step protocol and hence i always say sushruta is a, a, a it's not only about the medicine it's about the education even and there cannot be anything better than this to give any idea about the education sushruta samhita gives a, a idea of the education is true with that we'll conclude that chapter